Okay, in this video, I would say we're going to talk about one of the most important concepts in engineering economy. I almost think that these, the concepts in this video are so important that probably this is the only video you need in engineering economy. That's not exactly true, but we're going to, because we're going to get into a lot of exception cases, but, um, or a lot of special ways of doing shortcuts and things like that, but this is really the main video in engineering economy. So we're going to talk about time value of money. And what this is, this allows us to sh shift cash flows from one period to the next, taking into the concept of interest equivalents. In addition, cash flows is, it might seem simple, but cash flows are additive if they occur at the same period in time. So those two concepts, the ability to shift cash flows and to add cash flows that occur at the same period of time, um, are going to be able to help you evaluate all injuring economy problems. So just to remember the conventions that we talked about a couple videos ago, um, where we have a timeline, we have a present value, a P, and a future value, F. We sometimes have equal annual payments, A, or incomes, A. There's N number of time periods, and we use interest to um, shift things from one time period to the next. And then lastly, that the end of period cash flow end of period convention is that all cash flows occur that occur during the year are assumed to occur at the end of the year. So this allows us to ask the kinds of typical engineering economy questions, forget that or there, it shouldn't be there. The question would be, would you prefer $80 now or $90 in one year? So the question then, we draw this out in the time, using the timeline or the illustrations here, we can see $80 now, which is at the bottom, or $90 in one year. Now, if there, would, if there was not a problem of timing, like do you want $80 or $90, that would be really easy, right? Because of course, we'd want $90. But in this case, we have this problem that um, we have one occurring now and one occurring in the future. So the question we ask is, if I had $80 now, if I took that option, what would I do with it? And what we assume in engineering economy is that we will put it in the bank or we'll invest it in another place and earn interest. And we earn this I percent interest. I said bank, but it could be that you just use a different investment um, to earn interest, but you definitely will earn interest. So what that tells us is if let's just say we can get 5% a year, that's the interest rate we can get. So if we look at that and we take the $80 and we put it in the bank, in one year we'll have the $80 plus we'll have 5% interest on the $80, which means that we would have $84 at the end of one year. So now both of these investments are occurring at the same period of time. The question now is, would I prefer $90 in one year or would I prefer $84 in one year? And then it's easier for us to decide, well, we would like $90. So we would take the first option. Now, what happens is, what if it's two years? So now we have to look at how does interest behave. And in um, injuring economy, we use compounded interest. And so I'll show you what that's going to mean. So in this case, if we have $80 now and $90 in two years, we'll take the 5% interest and we'll put it in the bank for two years. So after one year, we'll have $84 like we had in that last problem. And then after two years, I'm going to, the second year, we're still going to have $84 in the bank. But now we're going to earn interest on that whole $84. And so that's the compounding, meaning that the interest is earning interest. The interest we earn will then earn interest. So the equation then is the initial amount times 1 plus the interest rate to the number of years that you're going to be in there. So in this problem, we have it, if we left $80 in the bank for two years, we'll have $88.2. And then now again, we can compare that and we can say, oh, well, I would much prefer $90 than $88.20. Now, if we think about this, if it was two years of interest, um, I'm, if we had 5% a year times two years, that's 10%. So in that case, it would just be $88, but we have $88.20 because that's the process of compounding. We get a little bit more because our interest earned interest. So this, is, this leads us to really the only equation you'll ever need in injuring economy. 
which is f, the future value, is equal to the present value, the initial number, times 1 plus the interest rate to the n power. So you remember in the problem we just did, we had $80 and we had 5%, so it was 80 times 1.05 squared, because it was two years, gave us 88.2. And that's really the only concept you'll need. And you can answer questions like this, and we'll go through each of these questions. Um, what return am I getting if I invest in a stock at $89 per share, then sell it one, after one year for 102 Would I prefer to get $500 in one year or $600 in 10 years? Um, and how, I want to have $1,000 by the time I retire. How much should I deposit now if I get 15% a year? Let's look at these at one at a time. So uh, lots of times this happens where we make an investment and then we get some return back. And so in this case, we're going to use this equation, f is equal to p times 1 plus i to the n. Um, we have a present value, which is the amount we're investing right now, $89. We have a um, future value of $102 at the end of one year. And we have an interest rate, that, and that's the thing we're trying to find. What it rate of interest am I trying to find? So we're just going to plug these numbers in here and calculate using algebra that we're getting 14.6% return. That's pretty good. Invest now for $89, sell in a year for 102 The next problem is, would I prefer to get $500 in one year or $600 in 10 year? And what we're going to do is we're saying we're going to use a 5% interest. So you can see these are different timings, 500 now in one year and 600 And we want to bring them to the same time period. And it's confusing which one to use. We actually can use anything. We can use, like, um, 20 years from now. We can use three years from now. We can use now. We can use one year. You can use 10 years. So I don't care, but I want to compare apples and apples, not apples and oranges. So we will convert these values to a common, common time frame. I can use any point in time, and I will choose them to move everything to year 10. And that doesn't have to be that way, but that's the one I'm going to use. Move it to year 10. The reason it doesn't have to is actually you'll get the same answer no matter where you move it. So I'm going to draw an equation, um, or draw the, draw the graphs, no. and, and this one, I, uh, for the second one, it's already in year 10, so I don't really care, it doesn't matter what it is, it'll be fine the way it is, so already that's in year 10 is $600. But what I want to do is I want to move the $500 to year 10. So what that means is it's going to be put in the bank in year 1, and then it'll, it'll earn interest for nine years. So you can see there I have n is nine. That's the difference between 10 and one because I'm moving it all the way up to 10. So I'm gonna find f, and in this case, I have the future value or the value in year 10 of $500 in one year from now is $775.66. So that means, um, $500 in year 10 is equal to $775.66, and this is larger than the $600, so I would prefer $500 in year 1. I hope that makes sense. Maybe you can work through it yourself, think about it a little bit more. So in this case, the next problem, and I want to have $1,000, $100,000 when I retire in 45 years, and I have some money now that I want to put down, so I want to know how much, um, how much I should put down, and I'm going to get $15 percent per year. That's my estimate. Now again, that might not be right, but that's what I'm going to estimate. So this is what we're doing. We're finding P. We have a future value of $100,000 in 45 years. So F is equal to P times 1 plus I to the N. Again, our, our equation that we're going to use all of the time. Um, we have F, I, N, and we're trying to find P. So we just plug in the calculations, solve for P, and we get $186. If we put $186 in the bank right now, leave it there for 45 years at 15%, we're going to get $100,000. That seems kind of unbelievable. Well, 15% is pretty high return, but it is, it is quite unbelievable. And I should tell you now, actually, all through these videos, I make mistakes. So if you find a mistake, please let me know because I would like to correct it on the um, YouTube video since it's for the public to see. But if you, like if somehow or other I did a calculation and it seems like that's wrong and you do it and it seems like it's right, mm -hmm. then I would totally really appreciate you telling me. So the only equation you'll ever need to know in engineering economy is this, but you also will need to know that cash flows occurring at the same point in time are additive. So for instance, 
this first thing. If you get $200 and then you get $500, you're going to have $700, right? I mean, that's kind of dumb. They'll add them up. But if you get $200 today and then you get $600 next year, you don't have $800 because they're occurring at different periods of time. So what you do is you take the $200. If you want to know how much money you have right now, you take the $200 you have now and you find the present value of the $600 by discounting it 5%. So it's the same as having $771 today. I hope that makes sense because that's actually a pretty advanced concept to take a future value and discount it back to the present in order to add it to another present value. So lots of times in injury economy, this happens too. We have a list of cash flows that are occurring out into the future and we wanna know, well, what is the equivalent value right now? So lots of times we bring everything back to the current place so that we can know the value of it. So what we'll do in this is we're going to take each of these cash flows one at a time, bring them back to a present value, and then just add them all up. This is what that equation looks like. So we have $200. It's a negative value, and it's occurring right now, so we don't have to adjust it. But $12, we have to discount it one year at the 5%. The $6 we discount two years at 5%, the 53 years, the another 54 years, and the 150 we discount back for five years. Now what we've done is we brought all of those things back to time period zero, so now we can add them up. And that means it's $18.73. Now the question is, should I make this investment, this $200 investment? Should we take the $200 and put it in the bank instead? Because if the present value is 1873, well, what if we put it in the bank and what would we get then? So if we put it in the bank, at the end of the time period, we're going to have $255.26. So that's good. So we have 200 now, negative, and 255 in the future. Well, what is that in time period zero? Because we want to know if it's comparable to 1873. So we're going to calculate the present value of this. And we can see the um, the the 25526. That should be the, the fifth power, not times five. But if we bring that to the fifth power and it, and add it to the negative 200, we get zero. So now the, it's actually better to invest in that first investment than it is to put it in the bank because it's greater than zero. Now that's a lot. That was a lot of calculations on this video, and I'm hoping that you can follow it and you're under you're uh, you're okay with it. Um, and also, I will whenever I've introduced a equation, there will be this blue box here that then you can say, okay, I have an equation, maybe to put on your equation sheet, but to know that these are the most important equations in injuring economy. So we've talked about the most important equation, f is equal to p times one plus i to the n. And then we also uh, have this concept that cash flows that are occurring at the same point in time can be added, to, added together.